What's up guys, this is John Hammond, still looking at some of the Python Flask module. So, in the last video we took a look at how we can create different URL routes in our Flask application, but now we're going to get into actually writing like stuff that you would require for a website, right? Like HTML, the cool stuff, the stuff that actually makes it a web page. So, you can, of course, just include HTML tags and stuff that you want to have as like HTML stuff, in your application. So if I'm running this and I've got it loaded here, if I had those header one tags, you can open up and you'll see that, okay, now that hello world text we had before is much larger because it's a header tag. And if we wanted to use strike, etc., we could. Um, so we have like the option to use HTML in here, but that's obviously not really the prettiest thing when you have HTML kind of embedded in your, your Python code. So Flask offers up a solution, and it's noted as templates, and it uses the Jinja 2 templating engine, and you can essentially take advantage of it by using the function render template, and we'll have to include that from uh, Python, uh, Python's Flask module up top. We want to import not just the Flask object, but also this function render template right up top, and we'll have to use it for our pep8 thing to go away. So if you actually were to be using a template, all of those files have to be stored in another directory that's inside the same directory as your own source code, whether or not it's a package with a Python init file or a script that we're working with, like in our case. Um, so we will just have to create a directory templates. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, just going to make directory templates. Cool. And now let's create a new file called like base page.html. So we can use HTML normally here, just like we would in any regular web page that we're trying to design. So I'll just whip out some basic HTML here. Head, title, our Flask app, and title, um, meta car set equals UTF-8. Okay. Make sure we end that element. Great, so now if we wanted to, rather than returning a string, we can simply run render template and we'll have to supply the template file name. So base page.html is the name of our file and it's in this templates directory, right? Yep, so if we wanted to say base page.html, we certainly could. And then trying to load that website now we will have the full HTML here. So we can view the source and we've got HTML. Great. So that's neat, but the real benefit doesn't just come from, okay, I can render HTML. It's that we can control variables and things that actually go through this template. So in case we wanted to have a application that would say names or say hello, right? We can say hello and we'll include a string name, name, and we'll say we can pass along that variable to our render template function. The keyword being, okay, the name of the variable that will be present in the template that we can access with the Jinja syntax of these two curly braces, trying to note a variable. And we'll pass in the variable that we want within Python. So if we had this like um, identity, that is still going to be here where you'll reach name being the variable that you're using as a keyword argument right in that Python function. So let's change this back to name. I just don't want the, that, that to be confusing. I wanted you to understand the distinction between the two of them. Okay. So now whether or not we actually supply a name we can do the same test that they're displaying here in the documentation because Jinja is awesome and allows us to do some like logic determination, not by using the two curly braces for this one, but instead using a opening or ending curly brace with a percent sign. So that allows us to do um, like for loops and if conditionals, et cetera, et cetera. So it adds a little bit more program programmatic functionality inside the templates. So I can test if name, and that case is just saying if name exists or if it's actually supplied or has a length greater than one, it'll display that. Otherwise, we'll have an else statement here. We can say, 
hello world just like they're doing kind of in that documentation here so we can see it in action okay so now we have the same functionality that we had in our previous application with URL routing but we are using one URL and we're able to determine whether or not a name is supplied and it'll change the functionality within our template because our template is the one that's doing the logic. So let's check this out. Now we'll get to our forward slash and name is what we're going to have to define here. Oh, we need to do an end if you have to specify what it is that you're ending in our template here. This is the Flask debugger. So again, we had the option to execute code from here, but it will explain an actual error rather than just simply crashing the program. So that's good to know. And that is one word, and if is its own word. A good note here is that in the documentation, they specify another route for this same uh, function here. So if we wanted to not have that error on just the index page, we can do that same without the name variable being supplied. We can just have it defined here. So now back in the original application, after that's been reloading, um, we will of course have to make that argument optional so we can set it to none. In that case, it doesn't have a value if it's not actually supplied and that same base page will be able to determine, okay, whether or not it's actually included here. So we can go ahead and run that. And now we just have hello world, but if we were to supply a name, hello John, it'll go ahead and greet us. So perfect. But even more power comes from this when we start to talk about actual template inheritance, because we can explain and, and kind of define an a, a template that we'll use as literally a base page, like a header or a footer for our actual like content. And let's say we had, okay, here's our, our, our navigation that we want. Um, here are the links that we want to actually include, UL. We can have pages for like actually contacting us or about, etc. Let's actually leave these as blank links for now. Same thing for about, home, etc. So you can have other links that you'll include only in your base page, so that way you don't have to um, change that navigation scheme for every single page in your website. You can only do it in one location, as in the like actual template that you want to use as both your header and your footer, or your layout in this case. So you can define a block you can see over off the side in the documentation, that will actually be your content and it will be replaced with whatever you use or specify in another template here. So if I wanted to include like home.html, we can say that home will extend from a specific layout, in our case, base page. You'll specify all the information that you actually wanna have in here and you can use as many blocks as you'd particularly like but content is kind of just the same one that you see most often. So it extends base page.html. We'll note our block content, note our end block. So we can have our own paragraph tags in here. And then define a simple page that may be the home page or whatever it may particularly like. So when we render the template, we can specify only home.html, but it will include or extend from that base page layout that we created. So again, we can have our navigation or links to any CSS files or JavaScript files accessible from a global location. So let's go ahead and see how that looks. Check out Firefox here. And now we've got our navigation up top and we've got welcome to our page and we don't need any of these name functionalities for what we were just doing, but that is the functionality that makes templates awesome because you can have essentially headers and footers in their own uh, one file and easily modify that to make like site-wide changes as you need to. So 
Cool. Thank you guys for watching. Um, I do want to shout out my supporters here. Those individuals that send some love on Patreon, you are helping me so, so much be inspired and motivated to make more content. Uh, $1 a month on Patreon will give you a shout out just like this at the end of every video. $5 a month gives you early access to content and videos that I record uh, before I release them on YouTube. If you did like this video, please do leave a like, maybe a comment if you're willing to subscribe. And hey, if you want to support me, check me out on Patreon. Thanks, guys.